right, sorry. <clears throat> Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm here with Mark, and we are looking at some cool title stuff you can do with motion. In 3D, I might add. Yeah, a little bit of 3D text animation, which we've done before, but I wanted to base it on a customer request we had right. to um, do something similar to the Netflix intro. So I thought it a good opportunity to do something that's inspired by an existing title, not try to mimic it exactly, because it's mm -hmm. not as interesting to me, but to use it as a launching point. So sure. let's take a look. First of all, here I have the Netflix production logo, so let's play that. Okay, and the key elements here are it popping out. We have this white background. It There's pops a out of this white background. Yes, it's got a vignette. Pops out of it with a nice shadow and then settles down and changes color. So I want to kind of hit those key elements, but maybe design something a little bit different than that, but kind of follow along on that. Because you can do all this in motion pretty easily. So here I am in motion. I've opened a title project so that it can be published to Final Cut because then you could always change the title to Final Cut. I'm going to delete the... Um, title background and the text that come with it. I don't really need those. I'm just going to start from scratch. T for the text tool. And I'll type emergent in here. Emergent? Yeah, exactly. the text will emerge from the background. And what I'll do is I'll first, in the properties, I'll reset its position so that it's centered. And then in the text inspector, I'll align its center and scale it up so it's nice and big. And then maybe back in properties, because the baseline is on the center, I really want the whole text to be centered, move it down a little bit. So this is my text. I want to turn it into 3D text. So back in the text inspector, in the appearance tab, I'll enable 3D text. So um, now if I add a camera and say switch to 3D and orbit the camera, we can see that it's 3D text there. Okay? So now that it's 3D text, let's make a few little changes. I'll increase the depth to maybe about 70 so it's thicker. And remember, the Netflix one didn't really have any kind of bevel on the edge. And this one has a little bevel there. So I'm going to get rid of that by taking the front edge size down to zero. Alternatively, you can just change the front edge to square. So it's pretty simple 3D text you can see right there. I'm double clicking, by the way, just to reset the camera there on that orbit tool. So now that I've got that text, I want to add the background. So for that, I'm going to add another text object. And the reason I'm doing this is that 3D text in motion is kind of its own separate world. Mm -hmm. So 3D text cannot interact with 2D layers. Uh, and that might make you think that 3D text can't interact with anything, but it can. It can interact with other 3D text objects. So the trick is to make a flat plane out of a 3D text object. Ah, I see like and a then, square or a circle or yeah, any, any and then you get the cliff. interaction, right? Yeah. And we've done other MacBreak Studios where you can use 3D text to make logos mm -hmm. and, and just about anything you want. Right. So what we're going to do here is T again for the text tool, click in the uh, canvas, and this time before we type anything from the edit menu, I'm going to choose emoji and symbols. And that brings up the character viewer, and I already have the bullets and stars category selected, and I even have the square I want to use selected. Now, a funny little thing here is when you click on these once, nothing happens. If I double click on it to add it, I end up getting a little extra, <laughs> an extra like, character. A special gift there. Yeah. So I'll hit delete to get rid of that yeah. guy, and we'll close this. <laughs> um, escape to get out of the text tool. And I want this thing to be quite a bit bigger. So um, you could increase the font size because it's a font. But I'm, not, I'm going to use scale. You could do either one. And before it gets much bigger, just to make things easier, I'm going to right click and choose the anchor point tool to move the anchor point to the center so that I scale it. It doesn't scale from the corner like that. Q back for the uh, 3D tool. I'll move it kind of to the center. And now we can really crank up the size of that to fill the screen. It just looks like a normal background, but it really is a slab. But it's really a slab. Yeah, in fact, it's not yet because it's not 3D, but we'll make it 3D. Now it's a slab. Now it's a slab. Now it's a slab, yeah. In fact, you can see in a little preview right. there. But I don't want any depth on this at all. And in fact, let's make the front edge, edge square. Um, so now if the we emergence is beginning the camera, to emerge. Yeah, let's deselect <laughs> everything. Emergence is beginning to emerge. Oh, that looks cool, man. Yeah, see, that so the text really... is intersecting yeah. that guy. Now, I really want the text to be right on top of it. So one way to do that would be to use this 3D uh, compass here to look right on the edge. And then I'll select the text and drag it forward so it's just touching that green line there, right Which about is there. the slab. Yeah, exactly. So let's go back to our active camera view. And if we orbit the camera now, yeah. the text is just, it's poking through just a little bit, but that's okay. It's on top. 
pretty bright and crazy right now, but that's okay. We'll come back to that in just a minute. In fact, let's, let's t tone it down a little bit. If we go to the 3D text uh, appearance attributes here, there's an environment and a lighting style here. So under the environment, what we can do is just kind of crank down the intensity to make things not quite so bright. So do that for both because the slab are, and the text. Yeah, we're just going to bring that down a little bit just so we can see things a little bit better. We can right. play with, we'll play with the lighting and right. shadows a little bit later. So now I want to animate this text to pop out from behind right. this slab. So to do so, under behaviors, under uh, text animation, I'll use the sequence text behavior. Your favorite favorite favorite, favorite behavior. Yeah. So I'm going to move the playhead forward about a second and uh, maybe a little more. Press O to trim it, and then Option Command O for a play range a little after that. Move the playhead back home, and then to animate this, I'm just going to drag the on Z. the Z, yeah, to yeah. move the whole thing behind. And it'll pop pop through. Once. Pops through. So yeah. now when we play, it pops through. One character at a time. It's, yep. a se it's sequencing. It's sequence text. Yeah. It's sequencing text from the yeah. beginning. You know, we could choose to sequence uh, in different, you know. Uh, in different ways, instead of forwards, we could go backwards, have it come the other way, or center to ends. Uh, but let's sort of keep this similar to the Netflix one and go forwards. But let's also change the speed. Right now it's constant, which means the kind of each popping off and, and immediately stopping. Let's choose um, ease both, so the ease in and out. But if you notice now, the last one kind of slows down, but the rest really don't. And that's because the apply speed is sent to once per loop. Right. So I want to do per object so that each letter comes in a little slower. It's hard to tell because they're so fast. So I'm going to increase the spread here, which increases how many letters are being animated at a time. Mm -hmm. And it smooths out the animation. It still takes the same total amount of time. And how to smooth it's smooth. things it's out It's not like yeah. perky-jerky. So now they kind of each move in there. So, that's great, and it's a nice start. It's a little hard to tell they're poking through, and that's because the face of the text is completely flat to the plane. So one option we have, I'll go back to the start here, is we could rotate the text. I'll rotate it in X and Y a little bit here. Yeah, the sequence text behavior, what you do to the first glyph is going to be applied out to the rest Everything, of them. Everything, yeah. So now each of them rotate into position as well. That's cool. So it's kind of nice, and you can easily adjust that. Now that I've done that, you see rotation's been added right here, and you can play around with that, the amount of rotation um, or the direction of the rotation, and really well, that's nice. get that's, exactly what you want. You get you like want. a glint going across yeah, now because this, of the light. Because of the environment that it's in, exactly. Yeah. So from now, what I'm going to do now, for a moment, I'm just going to reset the rotation. We'll come back to it. So we're just popping through. The Netflix one popped through, but it went a little too far and fell back. Yeah, it did. It uh, basically overshot. Yes. Right? Oh, so, the over, there's a new overshoot behavior. Yeah, so we'll use the overshoot behavior to make this um, pop through but then settle down. So the way to do that, the way to think about it is right now we have position changing. It starts from about minus 240 and then comes up to zero. So I'm going to set that back to zero. And now there won't be anim any animation, but instead of this Z position being animated by popping a value in there, I'll click the menu here and choose Add Parameter Behavior, Overshoot. And I'll set that Overshoot starting value to the same thing, about minus 250. So if I do that and play, oh, I also need to trim, sorry, I need to trim that Overshoot behavior to end about the same time as my sequence text behavior. And it's a little hard to tell now, all we did is lose the individual letters coming in. The trick here is to bring the ramp duration way down and to bring the cycles all the way down, and then we'll crank up the acceleration a little bit. And now you can see yeah. that it's overshooting. It's coming up too high. Yeah. And in fact, if we orbit the camera, you can see this a little bit more. If we go over here, you can really see how the text is popping up and then landing. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. So the, the disadvantage of the overshoot is we lose that initial um, animation of each letter, but it puts it on the back end instead. Right. Okay, so from here, what I want to do is, by the time it settles down, I want it to be um, have no more thickness and be red. Right. Right. So right before it settles down, I'm going to set a keyframe for the text for its thickness. So depth is 70 keyframe, and while we're here, let's also set a keyframe for its color. There, its color is white, and then by the time it settles down, right about here, we want its depth to be zero. Yep. And its color to be, let's do the, the red. red. Okay. Yeah. So we added those in, and now it comes in, settles down. 
That's and, really cool. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And then we can adjust those keyframes and maybe I'll move them back a little bit in time so it starts a little bit sooner. So it pops out. And now from here, we could say, hey, let's go back to our sequence text and add a little bit of rotation again. Kind of liked that rotation yeah. of it coming in like that. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So it creates a nice, cool effect. Now, the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of shadow on here because we had these neat shadows in the Netflix thing. So to do that, we'll add a light object, new light. And I'll take this light in the inspector here. I'm just going to make a directional light, which is way too bright by default. I'll bring the intensity down and enable shadows. Now, a directional light, it doesn't matter where it is, so changing the position doesn't do anything. It's kind of like sunlight, but I'm just gonna change its rotation to point it down and a little bit off to the side like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have a nice little shadow that helps show that there's a background and helps kind of sell the whole 3D effect Can you make the shadow a little bit darker? Or? I could make it a little darker. What I would need to do is we have the text has its own lighting. Right. So, uh, for instance, if I select the background, you know, we could bring the intensity of that background down a little bit more. Right. Or we could also change or turn off the lighting that is built into the text or ah, lower it. So I, as I, I lower that, see, I can lower that and then bring the sh that brings the shadows up. And then I can go back to our directional light and bring its intensity up. There we go. Because now, now because it had a very, the, yeah. the uh, Netflix one had a much darker intense much shadow. Much darker shadow, right. That, Right. That looks really great. So you kind of play between the lighting that's built into the 3D text in the mm. environment and the mm. lighting of it and the light that you add. And between the two, you can kind of get a nice effect. Oh my gosh, it looks fantastic. So not exactly the same, but a good option, uh, a good opportunity to use that idea to create something similar and animate 3D text Excellent. motion. So if you found that useful and helpful, go back and watch every motion tutorial he's ever done on our YouTube channel. Which there's You'll plenty be busy. Of them. You'll be busy. Or you can go to, his, uh, go to our website and buy his training and, uh, and actually follow along with his project files. So really great. Thanks, Mark. Excellent, excellent tip. We'll see you next week on MacBreak Studio.